If you're reading Attack on Titan every single month, you probably know the excitement that these chapters hold. There's so much going on, and the fact that we're in the final stretch of the story really goes to show with everything that is currently being released. This recent chapter really helps put in perspective and reflect on the narrative coming into its final arc. We've really taken that final corner onto the last bit of stretch, and it's all kind of home run from here. There's still bits of information that uh, we're obviously missing, and we need to explore but so far a lot of loose ends are slowly getting connected bit by bit and it's a very beautiful thing to see. This chapter went above and beyond. I've seen a lot of people's reactions on Twitter and on YouTube and in Discord and everyone was losing their mind over this chapter. A couple of specific reasons but the biggest one I want to talk about is Levi and kind of the impact that he's had throughout the entirety of the story uh, but also this chapter specifically. Leading up to this point Levi has never really been defeated. Kind of the most powerful person or weapon in the story, there's a lot of good reasons for that. He's a very, very difficult opponent to verse. He's very versatile. He's incredibly strong and smart. Really, no one can stand up next to him. Upon leading up to last month's chapter, where Levi got caught by surprise uh, and Zeke managed to kind of explode with the lightning spear stuck in him, Levi got launched across the field and took like a direct impact of that lightning spear, basically, and it messed him up heavily, right? And it reflects in this chapter chapter perfectly and it, it took a lot of people by surprise because it's like holy hell like did Levi actually die are we going to lose one of the most pinnacle characters in the story to such a weird demise I don't necessarily think that's the case I know a lot of people still think that for some reason Levi is dead but if this most recent chapter kind of shows anything it's that Levi has luckily or just barely escaped death right and there's a couple of different reasons for that the the very overprotectedness of Hanji when she's kind of checked Checking Levi's body and the fact that she won't let anyone else check his body for a pulse. Uh, she goes to uh, kind of jump into the river directly after it to escape Aaron Yeagerist or whatever they call themselves with Levi's body, try and get out of the area as fast as possible. But another thing is the scar kind of on Levi's face. I found it very pointless to kind of draw up a scar uh, on Levi's face or a big gash if you know it weren't going to be played upon. Before you even got to see like the follow up bit with Hanji, just Levi's scar in itself is pretty prevalent that he's most likely going to be alive because that's going to be like a defined feature for him whenever he comes back into the story. I think the bigger question right now is if Levi does continue down this path, you know, his impact into the story is going to be 10 times bigger now. And I think this is a really good thing that uh, Hajime Isayama has done, who is the author, obviously, is that he's taken the biggest threat out of the story, uh, but it can ultimately bring him back in at any time. And he's going to have a lot of hatred towards Zeke and a lot of vengeance that he'll want to act upon. So, I think that's going to be very interesting to see and how he reacts to Zeke again. I think there's going to be some sort of final fight there between them. Obviously, there's like this massive rivalry conflict between Zeke and Levi. Uh, the amount of times Levi has beaten Zeke is, I think, like three different times on three separate occasions. And then this time, obviously, Zeke got the upper hand by basically pure coincidence uh, and caught Levi completely off guard. So I like where this is going. The heavy betrayal of Levi is going to be very important in the future. Whether he comes back in full health, probably very far from that in terms of his injuries. We don't know the specifics of his injuries, even though Hanji did say something. So she could have been over-exaggerating to make it seem like he was more dead. Obviously, blown up internal organs is pretty much impossible to save. So it wouldn't surprise me that she went a little bit overboard with the details. I love it. So far, it's it's going to be very, very interesting to see how he makes his return into the story and the impact he plays as someone that's out of the story right now that sifts back into it at a very pinnacle moment, most likely. We which ultimately brings me to the Zeke situation. I love this Zeke situation. I really do. This chapter really helps kind of understand his plan more internally. You understand what he's doing with Eren, and now the kind of idea if Eren was kind of left in the unknown or not is completely cut off. We know as readers that Eren knows what Zeke is doing, the whole plan entirely. So Zeke and Eren are 100% in cahoots. The betrayal of Zeke in this chapter was really well done, and the whole kind of Ymir path situation situation was extremely interesting. The bigger question is how is Ymir kind of connected to this? Uh, considering Zeke was on the verge of death, kind of took a gamble and it didn't really pay off well, the only reason that he kind of survived is because a random titan came along, ripped open its stomach and kind of chucked Zeke inside and we 
then kind of explore his mind a little bit, which I found beautifully well done. I guess the kind of the descriptive nature of it, like just showcasing us this imagery, is kind of a first for Zeke's case, and I think his experience from it was honestly a pretty big deal. He goes on to explain that this girl was kind of fixing his body, and it felt really weird, it felt like it took really long, but it was done in an instant, and he kind of made this connection uh, with this girl that this is what is so called the path, basically. Now the path is kind of the connection that all Titan shifters have with each other, and supposedly these paths are actually now Ymir, right? If, if, if this chapter kind of goes to prove anything, to some extent Ymir is the path that connects all the Titans together, from past to present to future, etc, etc. So would it be too far-fetched to say that maybe Ymir is kind of overlooking everything? It's a very mystical element to the story. I think a lot of people have talked about it or kind of theorized it, whatever. But I do like the idea that Ymir's kind of soul is split up into all nine titans. And if you were to bring all nine titans back together, would Ymir kind of be reborn to some extent? Or would she be this? Would she be that? I don't know. That's a whole nother idea in itself. And it kind of disrupts the plan or the story that's kind of going on now with the youth organization of the Eldian race basically but the fact that we're diving deeper into the past specifically is a very good thing we need a lot more detail on this we need a lot more detail on Yamiya and if she is these paths kind of in like a metaphorical way maybe she can control things to a certain extent you know I don't know why this titan out of all things kind of appeared out of nowhere to help Zeke it doesn't necessarily make any sense unless it was Yamiya controlling this titan unless this titan was like a royal titan or someone with royal blood that was turned into a titan I don't entirely know. But the girl that Zeke kind of pictured was very reminiscent of Ymir when she was younger. I guess you can kind of come to that conclusion. So the fact that Zeke even made that connection and the reason why Ymir is, I guess, connected to all the Titans by her soul or whatever and the whole past ideal, it kind of paints like a, a clearer picture. And I'm very glad that uh, Isiyama is kind of exploring this a little bit more, uh, showcasing us Ymir and kind of what she entails to and potentially what she wants. Zeke definitely had some really nice moments in here as well even after he comes out of that whole ordeal just his betrayal of nature seems completely changed it seemed like he kind of awakened to absolutely everything because of this whole kind of vision that he had and like this Ymir encounter or the past encounter basically so found that extremely well done and he seems like a, a completely new character even so from here we've definitely detoured a little bit but we're back on track there's not much standing in anyone's way at the moment even though they're all kind of like congested and locked up in different situations. Eren's kind of got control on everything until Peck or whatever her name is kind of comes in and disrupts the whole flow more so, but it seems like Eren's not going to have that big of a deal with her potentially. I, I mean, I assume not, but you never really know. Zeke has definitely pushed far beyond all that stuff and he's well and truly like out of danger right now. You know, he's back in the fray. He looks reborn and healthy and everything like that. So from here, I feel like it's going to be a very conflicting nature of characters and I think this chapter did showcase a lot of beautiful things in a lot of beautiful ways. Uh, the artwork was insane. The Zeke portrayal and Ymir and whatever was extremely well done. Uh, the Levi stuff hit hard. You know, I ain't even gonna front. Like, everyone's favorite character is pretty much Levi to an extent, so seeing him in a way that we've never seen him in before is extremely hard-hitting. And I'm glad Isayama took the time to do this because it does go to show the grueling kind of reality of war. As strong as Levi is, and he's always been extremely strong, this can happen to Levi literally anyone and I think this was very well needed for Levi to kind of ground his character a little bit more because throughout the entirety of the story you know Levi is depicted as a god the man is ridiculously insane and that's why a lot of people love him but this definitely does bring his character down a notch in a very good way back to reality a little bit like this man can be hurt and he just what seemingly looks like escaped death so I'm more excited to see how he comes back into the story he will most likely go up against Zeke again uh, or even Aaron at this point uh, and the fact that we know that Aaron and Zeke are 100% in cahoots, their plans, their ideologies, even their moralities to a certain extent, are completely aligned, clarifies and paints a much, much clearer picture for all of us. Where do we go from here? How do we proceed with all these characters and interactions? I'm not entirely sure, but I am 100% positive that Isayama knows what he's doing right now. He's building and constructing a very beautiful final stretch of the story. It's shaping up to be really incredible so far. We kicked off the year really strong with Attack on Titan, so I'm excited to see what he has in store for us in the upcoming months. With that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you guys felt about the chapter. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you excited to see where the story goes from here? But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.
Goodbye.